Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode today. This is a place where I talk about health and wellness and biohacking and everything good like that. I (laughs) had a bit of a crazy weekend. I can't get into the specifics of it because it's not my business to share. Just family drama, I guess you could say. And pretty crazy stuff though, like not your average thing anyway. And so it was interesting because it was a very mentally challenging weekend. And I found myself really having to figure out how I was going to mentally get through it and get through the thick of it. You know, everyone has these moments in life when things kind of hit the fan and everything goes sideways for a little bit, whether it's, you know, somebody passing away or losing a job or, you know, something serious that kind of like stops you in your tracks. And I think that's life and it's inevitable, whatever it might look like, could even be a breakup, something like that. And when these really challenging moments come, it's very interesting <laughs> to be a, you know, health optimization nerd or freak or whatever you want to call it and to look at it through that perspective. So for example, this situation wasn't happening to me. It was happening to a close family member, immediate family member of mine. So there was not a lot that I could personally do, but it still is affecting me and did affect me and will continue to for the next you know, coming weeks and months, I'm sure. And it was, it really did stop me in my tracks because I had to take a step back and think, okay, like how am I mentally going to be resilient? How am I mentally going to get through this? And it's, it's interesting, you know, what you can kind of pull on and modalities and, and using all of your knowledge and all of these things that you've learned And then actually applying it to these like emergency situations. So for me, I was thinking, okay, what do I need to do? Do I need to do some visualization? Do I need to do some manifestation? Do I need to do some mindfulness or deep breathing or what type of breath work would be great right now? Do I need to go outside for a walk and get fresh air, exercise my body? What can I do right now that is actually going to reduce my stress levels? and reduce the anxiety, reduce everything and help me decompress. And so it was interesting just to kind of navigate it. I, a couple of things I did were I took a hot bath with my husband, <laughs> which was really nice. And whenever I do these types of baths, I make it kind of like a sanctuary. So no bright light. There's only salt lamps on and candles, beeswax, beeswax candles. There was like instrumental music playing softly, hot water with bubble bath and Himalayan salts in the bath as well, which is great source of magnesium, which is great for stress and anxiety. And just really like creating this space of decompression, like this physical space of decompression so that I could mentally decompress. And it was very effective. It was really great to sit in the hot water and just let it like kind of melt the stress away. And there is really something to be said about the power of water in that way. Hydrotherapy, heat therapy, even because the water, the water was warm and how much it can really help you when you are in a really, really tough place, which is part of the reason why I love saunas and the, you know, all these types of things. So It was just interesting to do that. And then I thought, and I was talking to my husband, I said, okay, I looked at him and I was like, okay, like, how are we going to get through this? How am I going to get through this with everything else I have going on right now? Business-wise, personally, all of these things, how am I going to get through this extra additional layer of things that I now need to process and understand? And so I kind of came to this conclusion of right now when I'm in the thick of it, all I can really do is handle one day at a time. And sometimes when you hear stuff like that, it seems very simple or not helpful. But in reality, like when things are actually really, really bad, taking it one day at a time is kind of the only way to actually handle it. 
it's the only way to understand what is going on. It's the only way to process, metabolize everything. So all you have is today. All you have is how you react today and what you choose to do, what you choose to say. And tomorrow will take care of itself. Tomorrow could be a better day. Tomorrow could be a worse day. But you will get there and you will be able to show up for tomorrow when the day comes. So instead of getting ahead of yourself and thinking about this and that and if and what about this, like it's so much easier to take it one day at a time when we are in these difficult moments. There is a lot to be said about just really keeping that in mind. And yeah, that that was my approach was like, okay, I'm going to take this one day at a time. I'm going to take a hot bath. I'm going to nourish myself. I watched like a comedy movie, you know, just to like decompress and just, I don't want to say distract, but like honestly kind of to distract myself. And I just stayed home. I didn't go out. I canceled my plans. And I just really tried to keep keep stimulation low, 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 low. And I did not do any type of stressful workout whatsoever. So I think we did a walk last night. This morning I went to the gym. I did I did weights. I'm going for a walk after this. So just being mindful of right now is not the time to like hit the Peloton for 30 minutes and kill it, right? There's enough extra cortisol going around the body that you don't need that. And I just really want to encourage all those people out there who are also going through a difficult time, like extra difficult, you know, when like things are really, really rough. <laughs> like and it just kind of happens out of the blue and you get a phone call and you're like, oh my word. I I want to encourage you to take it one day at a time and things get better. And you, when you're in the eye of the storm, like at least most of the time, that is the worst that it will get and you'll be able to come out of it. And the best, you know, the best way to think about that as well is like you have a track record of success of coming out of things. So whatever you're dealing with right now, and it's not the hardest thing that you've dealt with, likely. And you have come out of hard things before. So you have been in this place where there's so much unknown and uncertainty, so much emotion, so much negativity potentially. And you've come out of it. And so you can come out of this as well. That's my little PSA for everyone out there who's going through a really difficult time. And I hope that helps you a little bit because it's life, you know, things happen. And when, like I said, when life hits like this, That's when we pull on our biohacking tools. That's when we pull on mind-body connection, optimizing mindfulness, watching our thoughts and our actions, thinking about the nutrition that we're eating. Are we, you know, going to substances to be able to cope with what's going on? Drinking alcohol, smoking, whatever it might be, like all of those things. We really just want to be mindful with how we cope when things get difficult. Okay. Today's episode is all about salt therapy. This is so cool. I I don't think I've ever done a podcast episode on salt therapy before. And we get into all of it. We get into how it works and how to make it successful and how to benefit from salt and why it works. I actually learned a lot in this episode. I learned the difference between having a salt lamp and having a salt, you know, actual device that like pushes it into the air. I forget the name of it, but that pushes it into the air that you actually benefit from and and why that's so different. And, you know, salt walls and salt chambers and and Himalayan salt and and just I just learned a lot. It was really, really helpful for this episode. And I will link my affiliate link with Salt Chamber in the show notes for you and on my and on my website so you can find it. I'm hoping to order something from them. I want to do some sort of salt wall in my new home. I think it's very beautiful. It's very like aesthetically pleasing. It's very grounding. And I just love this idea of bringing the earth into the home more. So I'll keep you updated on it on that. And I'll definitely be posting about that on social media. <laughs> of course, that's at Biohacking Brittany on Instagram and Biohacking on TikTok. And you can find me, you know, easily there if you if you want to reach out. And a shout out to today's sponsor, Leela Quantum Tech. You know, speaking of home and making it more environmentally safe, they have really great EMF blocking and EMF neutralizing products. So this is something that I've incorporated in the last year. 
where I put a couple of their different blocks around my home to really just mitigate the negative impacts and harmful impacts of EMF. And this is something that you really, really should be thinking about if you are not already thinking about EMF and radiation and how that's impacting your health and your family's health. So they have some of the best products I've ever seen. They are just booming. Like Leela Quantum Tech is booming. They're huge in Europe. They're they're gaining momentum in the States and North America and Canada. And I'm I'm just so happy to be like associated with them and know them because I love, I love what they're doing. They're kind of everywhere now. They're at all the conferences. They're all they're at all of like the social media platforms on all the podcasts. So good for them. And they deserve all the success. So really check out Leela Quantum Tech. I'll link it in the show notes and on my website. And a shout out to my course launching next week. Oh my gosh. So my preconception course, Baby Steps, literally comes out next week to everyone on the wait list. It is not public yet. It won't be public, you know, probably about a month later, it'll go public. But this is huge. I had the idea of this preconception course like probably a year and a half ago, 18 months ago. And I was like, where is this course and protocol that I cannot see? Like, where is it? I looked on the internet, wasn't happy with what I saw. And so I created it. So this is for all the people out there who want to optimize preconception for you and your partner. It's like there, it's made for women, mostly women, but there is men like modules and lessons on every single topic that I talk about. So men are a huge part of this. They are not left out of the, of the equation at all. And it is super, super important to be optimizing your health if you're trying to conceive or prior to trying to conceive, which is really what I'm trying to educate people on. Preconception health is like becoming this trend, which is awesome. I'm so glad that I am kind of in the trend moment. And I really encourage people to take it seriously because one in six couples struggle with fertility. And that is a very high statistic and it's only getting worse. So we have to kind of take a holistic approach and think, why, why is this happening? If you join my wait list, you get $100 off the course, which is crazy. It will never be that cheap again. And I'm also giving another special surprise bonus. I don't know if I should say it. Maybe I'll say it next week. I don't know. But it's great. It's really great. I'm not going to lie. It's really great. And yeah, I definitely cannot offer that bonus to the main public launch because I don't have enough time. I won't be able to fulfill it. So definitely, definitely join that wait list. If you even have an inkling of wanting to have a baby or starting to try to conceive in the next few years, you get grandfathered into the course or grandmothered into the course. And so you have access for a lifetime. Okay. Enjoy this podcast episode and I will catch you on Friday for another one. Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. Thank you for tuning in to another episode today. We are going to be diving into the transformative power of salt therapy. This is a topic that I personally actually don't know a lot about. And I am excited to talk about this and learn about this on the podcast today because I've obviously been exposed to salt therapy in different ways, but I don't necessarily know the ins and outs of how it works. So we have a visionary joining us. His name is Leo Tonkin, and he is the expert in this space. We're going to get all into it, the science-backed benefits, how it can help with respiratory health, holistic health, everything like that. So Leo, welcome to the show. Great. Thanks a lot, Brittany. Appreciate it. So for people who hear this and they hear salt therapy, like where do you even begin to kind of explain that to someone who has no idea what those what those words mean? Right. Well, great question. I think a lot of people have their own perception about what salt is and what what salt can what salt can do for people. So salt therapy, a lot of people are familiar with the therapeutic powers of salt, if you will, right? You, as a kid, and I still do, I gargle with salt water. Uh, people put saline solution in their eyes. Back in the day, salt was used as a preservative. And really, was, it was done because it is very powerful as an antimicrobial or antiviral type of a substance. 
But what we're talking about is what's also known as halo therapy. Halo is the Greek word for salt. And this is a dry salt aerosol that is dispersed into a room, a booth, if you will. Uh, and all you do is simply are breathing it in. And where it evolved from really was the salt mine over in Eastern Europe, where you had miners working hundreds of meters underground, chiseling and grinding out salt. And the salt dust in the air, the miners were breathing in. And this is what was showing to be super beneficial. Well, the doctors were studying it, and they used to bring patients down into the hollowed out areas where they had mined the salt from. And people would be in there for hours and days for any kind of respiratory condition. And so in the 70s, a piece of equipment was created to replicate being able to create very small salt particles in the air that you breathe. A lot of people are familiar with being by the ocean, but that salt is more of a moist and a saturated salt particle. So the reason why dry is so important is that when you breathe it in, it absorbs, just like when you take a piece of eggplant, right, and you put salt on it, what happens? It draws the moisture out. Well, that's what it does inside of our lungs. And so the mucus, the allergens, the ash, the dust, the dander, everything that's in the air gets trapped into our system. So how do you clean that? Well, these salt particles act like a toothbrush to clean out your lungs. And because it is anti-inflammatory, it actually opens up the airways so people are actually getting more oxygen, more lung function. So for people who are biohacking or working out and all of this, key is your lung functionality, your oxygen saturation. Getting more oxygen going to your red blood cells is increasing your mitochondria as well as your cardiovascular system. So there's a lot of benefits for it. And spas and fitness centers, and day med spas and all types of resorts and all have these very interesting salt rooms, if you will. Some of them are decorated with salt in there. But, uh, you know, that's kind of what, what, what you're dealing with in terms of creating great ambiance and atmosphere. But that's just the core. It's really this piece of equipment that creates the dry salt in the air that you breathe in. And that's what you're seeing happening all over. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Because exactly like you said, like I've been to spas or wellness centers and they have this you know, Himalayan salt room and there's like loungers in there. And it really is quite relaxing and calming. Like I do definitely feel better in there, but I never really understood, I guess, why the salt and why that might make a difference, I guess, to the atmosphere. So for you personally, like how did you, how did you come to salt therapy? Because I know you have and run the company Salt Chamber, which has very cool products. I was looking at it earlier today online. And so how did you personally get to this place, like through your own health journey? Right. Yeah. Well, I, I learned about it about 12 years ago by somebody who was from Europe and I was interested because I, as a kid, had allergies and I never heard about this. You know, I'm familiar with salt and everything. And so I began to look at the research. I started to look at all the medical studies that have been documented, and I was very impressed. And I was wondering, why is that not here in the United States? And when I started to look at all the facilities in North America, there was only about a 10 of them that were providing this therapy. And I saw that it was pretty much a blue ocean and kind of was like, okay, let's see how we can bring salt therapy to North America. And we started to go to educating people in the spa and wellness space. And then we started to build these salt rooms. And so it became a trend within the spa world. And then it started to trickle into the fitness area and, you know, it's in the biohacking area. And, and this is great for seniors, you know, seniors, you know, our respiratory system. COVID obviously put a big spotlight on respiratory wellness. And now as people are taking more self-care and, and really taking their health into their own hands, they're looking at for ways to not only enhance the quality of their life, but their longevity of life. And your respiratory system is key to that. Because when you can't breathe well, you're not sleeping well, you're, you're just, you know, the stress and everything else. So breathing through your nose, 
doing breath work, and doing things inside of salt rooms now where it's not just sitting there and breathing in salt, but you can layer different modalities together like compression or lymphatic drainage or even IV. We have a lot of med spas that their IV hydration room is actually a salt room. So while you're getting your drip going, you're getting your salt. There are larger rooms that are doing yoga and breath work and sound baths inside of salt rooms. So you're seeing a lot of unique concepts out there that cover the range of fitness, wellness, yoga, massage, all types of facilities and places. Yeah, for sure. It's been really cool to see it just gain popularity in the last few years, especially after COVID. I think I think you're right. There is definitely a connection there. And I I'm curious with the lighting behind a lot of the salt walls that I see, does the like salt itself have to have light or have to be slightly warmed in order to get more benefit? Or is that just something that people add in because it looks nicer? Yeah, great question. There is a lot of myths and misconceptions out there. The It started from the uh, Himalayan salt lamps that people buy and put on their counters or nightstands or desks or where have you, where they were making claims that it you know, produces negative ions or that it purifies the air around. And that just simply is false. It's not only is it not true, it's been proven with evidence that that can't happen. And so there's been misconceptions. So when people are going into a salt room, often they'll see these beautiful Himalayan brick walls and backlit and cave-like structures. But to your point, there is no benefit to it from a health perspective. Psychosomatically, you know, there is a certain sense of how the different elements in nature resonate at certain frequencies, which is true. But in terms of providing any benefits, even if it's heated up like in a sauna and you think you're getting benefits, that there's, it doesn't work that way. Without a halo generator, which is the piece of equipment that takes pure grade sodium chloride, not dead sea salt or Himalayan salt or your table salt, it's a particular salt that comes from the earth, but it, all of the minerals and elements are taken out of it. So it's just pure sodium chloride because the particles are submicron size, which is, you know, when you look at your hair, a piece of hair is about 50 microns in diameter. These salt particles are less than one micron. So you barely even see it inside the room. So if some people are thinking it's like, walking into a room and this cloud of salt that's in the air, you really don't see it. But this is what you're breathing in. So the decor elements, I mean, there's some facilities don't have any salt on the walls or on the floor or in other areas. So you don't need that at all. You can do all kinds of creative ways to create a really soothing relaxation room, private oasis. We have a, you know, booths and we even have pop-up salt booths that are like a tent that will give your listeners access to look at and get a special discount. But we have people doing this at home. They're taking a closet. They're doing it in their shower stall. They're do You need to do it in an enclosed environment because you don't want salt particles getting all throughout your house. But we have a lot of people that are building them out. I mean, Dave Asprey has a salt booth. You have Tony Robbins has an amazing salt room that we've done. You've got athletes that are putting this in. You've got children that are pre-asthmatic, that moms would rather have their children do something natural than doing steroid inhalers all the time for asthma. It's safe for infants. It's safe for seniors. So you're seeing a spectrum of people where they're getting real benefits, primarily with the respiratory, from allergies, asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis. Some people are doing it for sleep apnea to reduce the inflammation throughout the larynx and everything in the esophagus, which is what Tony Robbins is using it for. So you're seeing tremendous benefit all around our respiratory system. But equally, it's also for the skin. And a lot of your listeners would be really interested in uh, dry salt is great for the skin because when it penetrates the first layer of the epidurus, it's pulling out any oils and bacteria and moisture that gets into the skin. And it makes it more taut and rigid. People that might have eczema or psoriasis usually has inflammation that occurs. And this reduces the inflammation. So you expose your skin to the salt. And it also is great like for acne, you know, pulls the oil out, it kills bacteria. 
So if you're ever in a med spa or a spa where they're doing facials and whatnot, often they're asking people to be in the salt room after or just exposing to it throughout the day or as a regular treatment. Are you confused on how to balance your hormones and understand your cycle? Maybe regulate it, reduce the symptoms that you're dealing with, like PMS, cramping, pain, headaches, insomnia, things like that. I created an ebb and flow menstrual cycle guide that talks all about this, and it is now on sale for the first time in a very, very long time. You can get 34% off with my spring special that I am doing. And I think this is the highest percentage I've actually ever given off on the guide. Typically it's 29 USD and now it is 19. And I really suggest you grab this before the end of March while you can, before the price goes back to normal. So this guide has over 30 different recipes that you can pull from that are all about how to optimize your hormones and sync your cycle. But it also has things like seed cycling in it and learning about the different nutrition and food for every phase of your cycle. There is a workout plan that shows you which workouts are best during which phase. There are lifestyle practices and biohacks, supplements, herbs, and botanicals, and even mental and emotional health recommendations made for each phase of the menstrual cycle. The recipes have calories, carbs, fat, protein, vitamins, and minerals all broken down for you so you can see exactly what you're eating and how it's going to impact your health. Again, I really suggest you grab this while you can during my spring special. It's linked on my website and in my show notes. You can save 34% and get that guide right now. I think this is a foundational for every single woman to understand her menstrual cycle and her hormones, especially before fertility or anything like that even comes up, or maybe you're post that phase of life and now you're trying to regulate again. This is also a perfect guide for that. So that is my ebb and flow cycle guide, and I will link it in the show notes and on my website for you. I'm so fascinated by that because I had no idea that the benefits came from a halo therapy machine like, you know, dispelling this salt into the air versus the salt decor that we see. And it's so funny you mentioned that because the narrative that you see online and social media is all about like salt lamps and salt walls and everything looks so beautiful. And I I agree, like you said, there is a psychosomatic part to it, but I thought there was more benefits to just having that. So Now it makes me rethink what I want to put in my new house about about how I'm going to get these these salt benefits. Yeah, and and we do. I mean, the you know we the halo generator, which is a manufactured in medical device facilities, a very precision made piece of equipment. You know, salt can be corrosive when it gets wet and moist, and the the electrical component. So it really is a really fine piece of instrument that takes a salt particle and makes a dry salt aerosol that is safe for you to inhale deep into your respiratory and lungs as well as the skin. The decor element, you can do all kinds of things, but it is really cool. I mean, we have in here in our showroom here in Boca Raton, Florida, we have, you know, different salt walls. There's Himalayan salt, pink bricks. There's white bricks that you can put color lights behind and get really cool backlit colors. We have textured panels made out of Himalayan salt. So it's a great biophilic way of bringing earth and groundingness into a space. And it really creates a great atmosphere to your point. But again, all of the health benefits comes from the dry salt aerosol in the air. And and that's where you have all of the efficacy from and where all the research and studies have been done. Nice. I love that. Yeah, my one of my dreams is to have a headboard behind my bed made out of salt. Like I just I don't know where I saw it. I saw it somewhere and it was like bricks. I I think it was uh, Himalayan salt and it was so beautiful. And I was like, wow, this would be amazing. So, but now I'm also thinking, okay, where do I put this halo machine? And and I think I've actually seen people add it to saunas, like um, like infrared saunas. Is that possible? Yeah. And we have a lot of customers, uh, whether it's a sauna dealer or a facility and it is a beautiful decor. I mean, we've done restaurants and bars and sushi places, and we put Himalayan salt in meat aging rooms. And so there's a lot you can do from a decor and architectural element. 
in all kinds of spaces. We've done homes where it's not a salt room at all, but they love the decor to your part. You know, when you have a beautiful fireplace area or beautiful this or that, you can have a great accent feature wall, and it's 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 really cool decor. We really revolutionized that when we were introducing that about twelve years ago. Yeah, absolutely. When you talk about making these like little salt chambers and using the machine to like dispel it into the air, would that type of technology work in a traditional sauna where you're heating up, like putting water on the rocks, or does it have to be in more of like an infrared space? Yeah, you want to, you don't want to put Himalayan salt as a backsplash around your tub or shower, you know, moisture and humidity are not fans of salt. So it should be more in a less humid and dry area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's, that's why I've probably seen it in the the places that I've seen it so far. Yeah. Yeah. You you would see it in the dry sauna. You wouldn't see it in the steam room. Yeah. That makes sense. I also saw on your website something so interesting and so unique is you have these kids playrooms that you've created yep. where it's like for people who don't know it's like kind of like a sandbox but instead of sand it's salt and so there's just these yep. kids playing in salt and i'd love for you to speak about potentially the health benefits that that might have with kids i'm not sure yep well i mean yeah so when you uh, in a larger room to really have an efficacy you need to th- get a certain salt concentration in the air. So in a very small space, like a booth, think of that like a, for those that remember what telephone booths were, you know, you have this small little space that you're in and a salt session is only 10 minutes, similar with our pop-up salt booth for homes. But when you get into expanding into larger rooms, you're increasing the volume of air. So you need to be in that environment a little bit longer. So what a lot of facilities have done that are really focused on wellness and family wellness and different aspects of that, they will have a children's themed salt room where they may have a big mural up on the wall, they'll the fish tank or ocean scenes or whatnot, and they'll put a salt box down or like salt, what you're talking, referring to, like a sandbox, and it's finer grains of Himalayan salt. Salt is antimicrobial, so even touching it, nothing nothing grows on salt. Salt as a surface kills SARS, MERS, COVID. Salt kills any kind of cells. So playing in it, it occupies the, the children. The moms may be sitting around the perimeter, and it's a play date. And while they're playing with some toys in the sandbox and whatnot, guess what? They're getting the benefit because they're breathing in the air. And so it it's great for children because, you know, when you go to school, you know, little kids, I have four grandkids, you know, going to school, you know, there's always the sniffles, there's somebody's catching a cold, there's always something going on. And then you have those that may have certain respiratory conditions as their lungs are developing, where they may be pre-asthmatic or they're having different issues. And so it benefits people of all ages. So the same benefit an adult will get the child will get. It'll help develop their lungs better, keep them cleaner. When you think about it, the average person breathes about 20,000 breaths a day. And when you start to wonder why we have so much respiratory conditions, you know, you turn on the evening news and the national TV commercials are asthma, COPD, eczema, psoriasis commercials. And our society is geared towards big pharma. And, you know, we don't do anything until, you know, something's not working right. And we go to the doctor and they prescribe something. Well, this is both for treatment and prevention. So being able to breathe in and keep your lungs clean because the air that we breathe indoors, as well as the air that we breathe outdoors, is the real culprit. You know, every day we're breathing in brake dust, rubber dust, wildfire smoke, ash, dander, pollen, the things that we breathe in is why we have so many issues. Carbon, methane, everything that's in the air. And indoors, it's just as bad. The HVAC systems are pretty much antiquated. You know, how often are people clearing, cleaning out their air filters in their home? If you're not doing it often, well, guess what? You are breathing in a lot of dust and a lot of products that you use to clean your house. You know, the chemicals that we breathe in all around us. So there really is a way that we need to really take care of our lungs. But because we don't see the dirt in the air, 
we don't really realize it. You know, if I were to give you a, a bottle of water and it was dirty, I don't know that you would drink it. But that's what's happening with the air that we breathe. If you're like me, you are thinking about your energy field, you're thinking about radiation, EMF, and 5G around you. And honestly, you're kind of worried about it as well. What if I told you you could just get a product, put it in your house, set it and forget it, and know that you're actually reducing the amount of EMF and radiation around you? That's where Lila Quantum Tech comes in. Their products actually neutralize EMF, even in electric cars. And this is so, so important because we are so bombarded with the amount of EMF and radiation in today's society. So their key product that I love is their Infinity Block. And it has actually been proven to increase ATP production, which is the energy in our cells, by 20 to 29%. So this really, really does matter. Lila Quantum Tech has over 59 studies and they actually also have another six in progress. They are randomized, placebo-controlled, and double-blind studies proving the great benefits of their products. I really suggest you get this infinity block. If you can get something that you can put in your house and say, hey, this is actually helping to neutralize how much EMF me and my family are exposed to, it just makes sense. Why would you not want some sort of safety measure like that that you can count on? They also have a heel capsule, which is like a little capsule that you can bring with you anywhere you go. And it does this same thing, obviously, to a smaller degree and smaller circumference around you. So I like to wear this when I go on planes because there's so much radiation on planes and EMF. And I like to wear it just in general when I travel. Their products have been proven to optimize HRV and improve your blood and obviously ATP production, like I said. So that's what I would do. I would really recommend looking into how you can manage your quantum energy field better because this is such a key aspect of optimizing your health. You can get a significant discount through the link on my website and also in the show notes and that will help you be able to get this at a better price. So again, this Lila Quantum Tech, I have the Infinity Block. It's in my bedroom. I actually sleep right beside it. And then I also have their heel capsule on a necklace that I take with me everywhere I go. And these are the two that I would recommend. I think this is a great starting pack for you and provides substantial coverage in order to neutralize the EMF that's around you and optimize your health. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I thank you for explaining that. I... Yeah, it's it's just so fascinating to learn about it because I think it's still kind of nuanced. Like it is popular, but it's one of those things that I think in five years will be much more mainstream and understandable more than it is right now. So for people listening to this who are, you know, eager to kind of add this to their home and add like a salt space to their home in some sort of way, can you share some tips or suggestions for kind of creating that or what you see works best for someone who maybe has never implemented this before? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a whole trade association around this industry, the Salt Therapy Association, and they have a website. So one, you can look to see, is there a facility near you by going online and looking at their directory? And that's at salttherapyassociation.org. So there may be a facility near you to take a look and, and try it out, it's especially those that may travel and go to certain spas and such, depending on where you're all located. But they're throughout Canada and throughout the U.S. and really around the world now. But for home solutions, people can take a very small space like the size of a sauna. And for some people that might have a sauna, we have a conversion kit where you can really you know, create a salt inside of an area because you really need an enclosed environment. So, you know, you can construct an enclosed environment yourself very simply. You can use our pop-up tent and put the halo generator in there. We have a special one that's designed for home and travel. When I travel, I take mine with me and I do it in the shower stall because it's pretty much enclosed. There's not necessarily maybe a ceiling, but when the equipment is on the floor and it's about the size of a water bottle, it's a great way of being able to do that. So some people can do it that way in their homes. Some people may take a closet and do something and convert it. And some people do rooms where they'll actually make a really cool wellness suite 
where they have a couple chairs, they might have other wellness modalities like red light, compression, or some other equipment at the same time. So they create their own little wellness area in their home. So a lot of different ways that people can be looking at doing that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's definitely got my ideas flowing. I'm building a home gym for the first time. And so I've really been thinking about, okay, how do I, how do I go above and beyond just, you know, weights and a a Peloton bike? Like, how do I make this more of a, a healthier space? And salt therapy seems like a fantastic idea for that, especially if I can figure out how to enclose some sort of small section of it or. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I you think can build more that walls. It. Yeah, we've taken walls and put, you know, use like you build the shower, you get some glass and you, you know, you, you know, use a, use one of the walls or a couple of walls that you can do in a corner or something and put a small roof on it, a lid on it and bingo, you can, you know, do it. So there's a lot of things and, you know, we'll give you some links that people can get more information on the home unit as well as if they're looking at a custom solution. So we can get into it, but you know, the home unit, with everything, you know, this is a piece of a med- medical equipment manufactured. And so, you know, it's around just under $2,000, but there's payment plans and other things. But when you look at the value and how long this lasts, if people are really into the longevity of their life, well, you got to take care of your lungs first and foremost, because you can go without water for a while. You can go without certain things, but you can't go off that long without breathing good. And that's just, you know, how it, how, how it's working. So a lot of research, a lot of evidence and science behind it. And, it. and it's something that people should be making a ritual. It's only a 10 minute time. Uh, we have some moms that have their pop-up booth and they have their, you know, they put their kids in there doing their homework. It's safe for pets. So we do a lot of work with uh, horses and other veterinarians and utilizing it. Any, any mammal that breathes is going to benefit. They all have lungs. And they're all breathing in the same air. So horses are tremendous athletes with huge lungs. People have been around horses. They have a lot of snot and all of this that goes on. And some of the top trainers in the world are utilizing salt therapy to keep their horses clean and and, and keeping their lungs clean. Athletes are doing this. You have NFL players, basketball players. It's great for recovery. People that are into biking and running and you're outdoor. There's just so much that you could be doing to keeping your lungs healthier. And people are are saying, you know, how much better that they are sleeping as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask you about that, like how it impacts athletes and enhancing performance and recovery. Is there any research behind like connecting that to athletic performance? There are anecdotal testimonials of everything. I mean, we have, you know, players on, San Francisco 49ers and other players all around the country, they are showing that they have better recovery, their lung function when they're measuring their VO2, the volume of their lungs and getting the better breathing aspects to it. It definitely is contributing to their endurance and their recovery of performance. So in terms of double blind studies and official, you know, peer reviewed on athletes. There's a lot of papers that have been written, but the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you got some of the top racehorses, which they don't talk, so you can't really evaluate them other than doing tests. And in California, one of the strictest states for horse racing, they're scoping the horses with medical equipment, looking inside their lungs and seeing how this is working for horses that are bleeders or they have asthma or they're looking at increasing their lung functionality instead of using antibiotics and using ways to cheat in horse racing, which becomes something that people do. This is drug-free. It's not steroid. It's not Lasix. It's not anything else. So it really is working. And we've got facilities at the World Equestrian Center in Ocala, the Hagyard Medical Institute for Horses in Kentucky. We've got shipping container that was converted into a two horse stall salt room that's at the Santa Anita racetrack in California that goes to the Del Mar track. So you've got a lot of interesting ways that salt therapy is being implemented. And you're right, not everybody is aware of it. There are some misconceptions. 
and it's gaining more and more popularity every day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I think that's remarkable. And again, like it just it just makes sense. So, what is what's coming up for you guys for this year? Do you have any new products on the horizon, or where are you thinking for the future vision of Salt Chamber? Yeah. Because we've worked with so many different partners over the years, with so many different installations, we're really starting to see a lot more of utilizing different wellness modalities, layering them together, as well as stacking them one after another. And because we've had the opportunity to really design spas that include saunas, both traditional and infrared, red light, you look at hyperbaric, you look at flotation, you look at cryo, you look at cold plunge. You got a lot of things that are out there that people are kind of testing. And some of the stuff that's out there may not be evidence-based, which we don't really, you know, kind of gravitate to. We look for things that really work. And there's different unique ways of combining some of these modalities. So for example, we have something called a wellness suite about the size of a large sauna cabin. And it has a sound vibration chair inside. You can do IV, you can do salt, you can do red light, you can do compression and lymphatic drainage all in one one box, basically. And that becomes something that's very attractive for not only the home market, but really the commercial market where you're seeing a trend where a lot of facilities are moving more towards what we call low labor or touchless modalities, meaning You don't need an esthetician or a massage therapist to perform the treatment. Like when you go to a spa, you would have a somebody performing a facial, doing massage and doing these things. But when COVID came along, all these facilities that you were touching people shut down because you needed to keep your distance. And that was part of what was going on in in our country. Well, all those estheticians and massage therapists needed to find work. And so right now there's a pretty much a large labor shortage in that industry, but it's also created a whole way for spas to rethink that they need to be more wellness oriented. And so you're seeing a lot more of these modalities becoming into spas, into hotels, into fitness centers. Instead of just going in and having workouts, they're putting in salt booths, they're putting in saunas, they're putting in cold plunge. So you're seeing a convergence of these things that are becoming part of a trend towards longevity and quality of life. Some people call it biohacking. Some people call it about, you know, ageism. Some call it longevity. But I think more and more people are starting to learn about what works and what we need to be doing and investing in their own health. And so I think that's the trend. We do have some new products coming out in a few months. But right now, we just launched the Wellness Suite and a Wellness Booth that people can find out more information in the links that you'll be providing. We do have these home units that just introduced about a year ago that is really becoming one of the more popular modalities right now for all types of people to have in their home. It's very simple to use. And the consumables of salt just cost pennies a day. So it really becomes something that people are utilizing and really staying healthy staying healthy with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And honestly, it's so exciting to see these wellness clinics or spas, whatever they're called, pop up because it gives access to these therapies that might not be as easy to get in people's homes. And it just makes it more accessible, makes it more affordable. A lot of the time you can do like monthly passes at these places that include access to X, Y, and Z therapy, you know, once or twice a month or something like that, like cryotherapy and salt therapy and whatever is there. And I just love that because I think we are changing the way we look at wellness from let me go to the gym and exercise for an hour to, hey, let me go to the sauna and do this and this and this and be more relaxed and like get more benefits than just this simple like workout that we were once so, so focused on. So, I mean, obviously there is a lot to say about working out, but still, and it's, it's really exciting because I love all of these modalities. So it's, it makes me happy that this is becoming more accessible to more people because they think that is really what the end goal is for a lot of these, these companies in these, these modalities. Yeah. And you're seeing all kinds of new concepts opening up around the country, right? You've got, you know, 
restore hyper wellness recovery. You've got franchise that focuses on bone density in their equipment at OsteoStrong. So I think you're seeing a big pendulum shift from what has been traditional healthcare by the medical community to more of the self-care, wellness, biohacking, whatever you want to call it, movement, where people are looking and re- researching and finding that there are these modalities that provide real benefits. I mean, a lot of in, in Europe, many countries, salt therapy is covered by their health insurance. You know, in our country, you have people doing salt therapy and they may be using their FSA and HSA payments towards salt therapy. So you're seeing a big shift. I mean, we, we have amazing stories by young adults that have had cystic fibrosis where they're typically having to go to the doctor so frequently and often to the hospital to get their system sort of drained out, if you will. And the stories of people not having to see their doctors for some time and staying out of the hospital, what it does to their medical bills and decreases it and them staying healthy. We're seeing at senior living facilities, people that are on oxygen tanks, not needing them as much. So you're really seeing real benefits that really impact the quality and longevity of life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, longevity in itself has just exploded in the last few years as this concept of improving health span, not necessarily just lifespan and everything that kind of goes around that. But something you said earlier, actually, in this show was you mentioned the idea of family wellness. And I wonder if we will actually start seeing that pop up in places like imagine going to a family wellness spa or family wellness clinic. Like I've never seen that, but it would be really cool to be like, oh, let me take my kids. And there's something here for this toddler. And there's something here for this eight-year-old that's going to optimize their health. Like that is just next level. It makes me very excited. Hopefully someone can do that. Actually, yeah, there's a project we're working on now and they're really creating a really unique salt environment and wellness environment where they will have different areas for different ages and some are putting in maybe a rock climbing wall where you can, and you're doing different activities or different stations that you are working, you know, for children to be doing their own type of workout or rituals on a, on a circuit, if you will, with certain, you know, there's a lot of cool ways to incorporate play with wellness. And it'll be really cool with some of the projects that we're working on right now. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I, I need to know more about that. That's so interesting. I also like, I'm just in this like fertility space in my life right now. So kids are very much on my mind. Right. And I, I just think that would be epic to be able to take your kid to do rock climbing and play and combining it with salt therapy or, or maybe there's red light therapy at the same time, like whatever it is, it's just, it's so next level. And I, I'm just so excited for future generations because as you know, and in this space, especially kids, like there are so many health issues that are starting so much younger now that the future generations aren't as healthy as generations were at their age at one point. So how can we kind of bring in these modalities to supercharge their health from a young age? Yep. Absolutely. I mean, that is, I mean, it starts with the kids. It starts, you know, growing up, you know, a lot of people, a lot of parents, they take their kids to the doctor and then all of a sudden they're taking allergy medicine or they're taking uh, steroid inhalers for their asthma and such. And a lot of doctors are becoming more aware of salt therapy. We have a pulmonologist and respiratory therapist that are active in the industry as well as owning facilities. Your average physician, if you walked up to them and asked them about it, chances are they're not going to know about it. So do your own research, and and there's research that the Salt Therapy Association can provide that shows all of the documented research by physicians and hospitals that have been doing this over the over the last few decades. Yeah, oh, I love that. I, that's just so encouraging, and I'm excited to see some of these ideas come to fruition in the next few years, hopefully. So. Mm-hmm. If people want to try your products and connect with you, maybe order something for their home, where can they do that and and where can they go? Sure. Well, a couple places. One is salttherapyhome.com. That's where we have our portable unit and we're going to give your listeners an opportunity to get a discount that they'll be able to look at and do. So you want to take a look at the show notes or in your promotions of, of this podcast. 
And then on the commercial side or people that are just in more of the rooms or facilities or we have a lot of people starting new businesses and such, you can go to Salt Chamber Inc, inc.com. That's our website for our industry. And the other one I mentioned about the association is salttherapyassociation.org. And then you can just call our phone number, which is 855-LOVE, L-U-V, SALT. Nice. I, I love that. I will put all of that in the show notes, like you said, and on my website so people can find you very easily. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. This was so enlightening. And I know my listeners definitely got a lot out of it. Great. Thank you too, Brittany. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.